<clears throat> Let's move on to the second example here. Second example. Okay, now, remember, I told you that the first step, factor everything, was already done. And if we look at the top and the bottom of this fraction, these polynomials are linear, which means they can't be factored anymore. So sure enough, step one is already done. We're skipping on to step two. Step two is get rid of all the denominators. Now, in this case, there is only one denominator. There were two ways to get rid of all denominators that we said. One was to cancel matching factors. So I'll look at this fraction. Are there any matching factors? I don't see any, right? There would have to be an x minus 1 in the numerator for me to cancel with that x minus 1 down here. And there's not. So can't cancel matching factors. But can I multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator? I, can, I sure can. So when you only have one denominator, that denominator is the least common denominator. Okay, so the least common denominator is the only denominator we have. I'm going to multiply both sides of my equations by the least common denominator equal to x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. Okay? Now, let me see. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Did not mean to do that. Can't cancel that. Okay, but what can I cancel? I can cancel this x minus 1 with this x minus 1, because this is being multiplied and that's being divided. They can cancel. Okay, That's the whole point of multiplying both sides by the least common denominator, is so that you can cancel. And 1 times anything is itself, so that side simplifies to x minus 1. So I've got x minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 1. Okay. Now, can I multiply anything? It doesn't look like there's anything to multiply. So 3, you can skip that one, because there's nothing to multiply. Nothing to multiply there. So we're going on to step four. Okay, step step four. What is step four? Add and subtract everything to one side. So right now we've got stuff on both sides of my equations. I'm going to add everything to one side or the other. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x and add one to both sides of the equation. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you've got to do to the other. And the reason I'm subtracting x and adding one is so I can get rid of one side. So x minus x is zero. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 is equal to 2x minus 1x is just 1x. 1 plus 1 is 2. So if x plus 2 is x, we can simply solve this polynomial at step 5 by subtracting 2 from both sides. So I've got negative 2 is equal to x. And there's my answer. x is equal to negative 2. Next example, remember step one is already done for us. We're going to just move on to step two, which is to get rid of all denominators. Can I cancel any matching factors? Yes, in this case I can. So if you remember, um, I'll just, so we've got a, if you look at this uh, middle fraction right here, I've got a K on top and a K cubed, which is just K times K times K in the bottom. So one of these k's can cancel, and I'm going to get 1 over 6k squared is equal to that k cancels with one of the k's making this a k squared. So I'm going to get 1 over 3 times k squared minus 1 over k. So I cancel, and that helped reduce this denominator, make it smaller, but there's still denominators, right? So I still, even though I was able to cancel that helped, I still have to get rid of denominators. So the only other thing I can do is multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. Now what's the least common denominator? Okay, so in terms of my coefficients for these three denominators, I've got 6 and 3 and 1. So the least common denominator has a 6 in it. But this is a different, uh, this is a different kind of problem in that before my denominators had a, well, that's not true. The last one did have variables. In any case, 
the least common denominator has a 6. And then these two denominators have an x, a k squared, and this one has a k. So we need a k squared. So 6k squared is the least common denominator because it's the smallest thing that all of these denominators can divide into. So I need to multiply both sides of my equation by 6k squared. Multiply both sides of my equation by my least common denominator, which is 6k squared. Okay. Now, I can distribute that in. Okay. So I've got 6k squared over 6k squared is equal to 6k squared over 3k squared minus... 6k squared over k. All right. Now, does anything cancel here? I think it does. So all of this cancels. Same thing on top as the bottom. So 1 is equal to. Then I've got 6 divided by 3 is 2. And k squared divided by k squared. I mean, those are the same. They cancel. So I've just got 2 coming from this fraction. And then over here, I've got a k squared on top. That's k times k and a k on the bottom. So one of the k's here, k times k, one of those k's is going to cancel with that k, leaving behind just a 6k, 6k. Okay. In other words, 6k squared divided by k is just 6k. So I've got rid of all my denominators. Okay. Now I'm running out of room here, so I'm just going to slide us over into this area over here. So if I draw an arrow, we're going this way. We're on to step three, okay? Now, can I multiply anything? Is there anything to multiply? There's still nothing to multiply. I promise one of these times we'll have an example where step three matters. But right now, we've got nothing to multiply. So we just go right on to step four, which is add and subtract everything to one side, okay? So here's my equation as it is right now. Okay. Now, if I'm trying to add and subtract some, everything to one side, this side has the least amount of stuff, so I'll, that side is the side I'm going to move everything away from. I'll just subtract 1 from both sides. Subtract 1 from both sides. So I've got 1 minus 1 is 0 is equal to 2 minus 1 is 1. And then minus 6k minus nothing is still just 6k. Okay, so everything's on one side. Now I've got a polynomial equal to zero. Can I solve that polynomial? I think I can. So here's what I'll do. This is solving the polynomial. I'm going to add 6k to both sides. Okay. So I've got 6k is equal to 1. 6k, negative 6k plus 6k is zero. And then I can... Divide both sides by 6, and I've got that k is equal to 1 over 6. There you go. There's my answer there. I solved for k using my five steps. Okay, do we have one more example? We do have one more example, and then this video is over. So this, I think, is probably the trickiest example of them all. Um, Again, step one is done. We're going to skip on to step two. We'll revisit step one next class. Next class is when we'll talk about step one. Okay. So we're going to get rid of denominators. How do we do that? Way one is we cancel common denominators. So there's an x here. Is there an x factor on top? There's an x on top, but it's part of this whole factor. Remember, factors aren't separated by pluses and minuses. So this x minus one is a whole factor. That x doesn't cancel. Um, there's an x here, but there's no x up top. There's an x plus 2 here, but there's no x plus 2 up top. So nothing cancels. We've got to use the other way we know how to get rid of our denominators, which is to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. Now, I've got two denominators here. They've both got an x, so x has to be part of it. But this one has an x plus 2 as well. So the least common denominator has an x and an x plus 2. Come back later. X and an x plus 2. So I'm going to multiply that by both sides of the equation. It's an x plus 
So there's one side of the equation. And here's the other side of the equation, x plus 2. I'm just multiplying both sides of my equation by the least common denominator. 1 